All right, welcome back to another episode of the Podium Pushers podcast with Justin and Brandon. We have officially made it. The summer break is over. The Dutch Grand Prix is upon us. It is race week. Once again, we are here to predict everything that is going to go on in the Netherlands. Brandon, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, it's finally race week again. I know we said it last week that it was kind of race week, but it's actually race week this week. So I'm super excited. I'm excited for Formula One to be back. And it's going to be a great weekend in the We survived this long break with no Formula One. We're not going to talk about the break that is just around the corner once again. We're going to enjoy Formula One that is happening right now. So let's jump right into it. Brandon, who is your podium pusher prediction for this weekend? Uh, I'm predicting Oscar Piastri. Um, he came into the summer break with a lot of momentum. Uh, I think he's going to continue to perform well. Um so I think Oscar's going to have a great weekend and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a solid one. McLaren's like really strong and I expect him to continue to do well. You stole exactly what I was going to say to agree with you because you said Oscar Piastri and I was like, he's got a lot of momentum. I could see it. And then you immediately said that he has a lot of momentum. So I obviously think that Oscar Piastri is a great choice. I have gone for Max Verstappen as my podium pusher of the weekend. He is currently undefeated at Zandvoort, and so it's hard for me to pick against him. I know that Red Bull was slowly slipping down the field as we went into the summer break, but there's a small part of me that's like, Red Bull's going to come back from this break, and they might go 10 for 10. I mean, I know that this has been the closest year of Formula 1 we've seen in a while, but there's still a little piece in the back of my mind that's like, Red Bull's just waiting, and they're going to bring it back. If it was going to happen at any time, it would be right after the summer break. I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope it doesn't happen, uh, but it's hard for me to pick against Max Verstappen at home. So I've gone for him as my podium pusher this weekend. I, th- I think it's a great, great uh, choice. Max always seems to do really, really well at Um Man, if Red Bull went 10 for 10, that would be crazy. That's that's a really bold prediction hot take right there, Red Bull 10 for 10. It, it could happen. We don't know. We'll see. Uh, I didn't officially make that hot take. I was just like letting you into my deepest, darkest fears was that I I hope Red Bull doesn't go 10 for 10. But based on what happened last season, anything is possible, really. Max Verstappen went 10 for 10 at one point during last season. So anything is truly possible when he's behind the wheel of that Red Bull. Who is your backmarker of the weekend prediction this time? Uh, my backmarker of the weekend, I'm going to go with the entirety of Kick Sauber. Um kind of the opposite of Oscar Piastri and McLaren. Uh, they kind of sputtered into the uh, summer break, and I don't expect them to do well. Um, yeah, there's just doesn't seem to be a lot going on there. Um, so they seem to be very focused on the future, not really focused on anything that's going on right now. So unfortunate for them in the present, but maybe it'll pay off in a couple of years. Hey, maybe this whole thing is like one big ploy. They've actually got the fifth fastest car, but Audi is like, you have to be terrible so we get more wind tunnel time for our car. Who knows? Uh, But yeah, I totally agree. I'm sure Sauber will have a terrible weekend for the Dutch Grand Prix because they've had a terrible weekend for every other Grand Prix this year, so that wouldn't be surprising. (laughs) Part of me is like, they have to really do something bad for them to get the back marker of the weekend point because if it's like 14th and 16th, I mean, that's probably one of their better weekends, but... Hey, I'm, I'm sure they'll be terrible and we can go ahead and just say that you're right on that prediction right now. Anyways, uh, my back marker of the weekend is Pierre Gasly. Alpine was another team who was kind of going up heading into the summer break. And then they had like three races in a row where they looked terrible. And then they were kind of good in Belgium. Esteban Ocon scored points. But who really knows where that team's pace is? Realistically, uh, I don't think they're going to be that great here. But Pierre Gasly got a podium here last year. And so I think there's going to be a lot of talk how Pierre Gasly performed well here last year, and they're going to be bringing up that podium. We're going to see social media posts about the crazy end to last year's race, and it's going to get people excited about Alpine, and then they're going to be terrible, specifically Pierre Gasly, because he got the podium last year. Nothing against Pierre personally. It's always straight vibes on the back marker prediction, but I have gone for Pierre Gasly this weekend. Yeah, I think that's a good prediction. Alpine, uh, yeah, they're either on or they're not, and on this year has been like p8 maximum so kind of crazy we'll see what happens yeah you're totally right about that they're a a very bipolar team they really have been since the new regulations it is either they are 
quick again or they are absolutely at the bottom of the grid. Uh, so that is kind of an interesting phenomenon that Alpine's got going on for him right now. Who do you think is going to get pole position this time out in the Netherlands? For pole, um, I've gone with Lando Norris. Uh, I think uh, Lando's been really, really strong uh, in qualifying this season. Uh, he's also been strong in, in the races, obviously. He's P2 in the driver's championship standings, but I think he's really uh, dying in qualifying this year, and I think that'll continue. Uh, I'm predicting Lando to be on pole. I think it's going to be really, really close. I think Lando Norris is a great pick. He almost feels kind of like uh, a Charles Leclerc from the last couple of years when it comes to qualifying. He can pull a great lap out when it counts, uh, but that comes at the cost of sometimes making mistakes and letting some good qualifying slip away. But I do think Lando Norris is generally a strong qualifier, and so he's always a good pick for pole. Uh, I've gone for George Russell as my prediction, another driver who is quite strong on Saturdays, obviously has uh, the lead against Lewis Hamilton this year, but has been known as Mr. Saturday his entire career. I think uh, Mercedes are moving in the right direction, and I think uh, the Netherlands are another track that could suit their car. I think if you have mixed conditions, I almost think that favors the Mercedes driver and the Mercedes team operationally more than it does uh, some other teams uh, like McLaren, who have been struggling operationally and, and with strategies this year. Uh, so I think Mercedes will have another good weekend uh, at the Dutch Grand Prix, and I've got George Russell on pole. Yeah, I think that's a great pick. Mr. Mister Saturday has been really strong this year. He already has, uh, is it two pole positions or just one? Two pole positions, Canada and Great Britain. Unfortunately, neither of those translated to wins for him, but who knows? Maybe this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, well, let's uh, talk about who we think is going to win this race. Going into our podium predictions, who do you have in P3? In P3, uh, I've got Lando Norris. I know I just said Lando's going to start the race on pole, but finish in P3. If you look at the stats, Lando actually has the most lost positions on lap one of any driver on the grid this season, which is kind of wild. Um, and I think we, we've talked about it a lot before, of Lando kind of making some mistakes. Uh, lap one so if he starts on pole I kind of expect that trend to continue maybe he'll make make a mistake turn one turn two turn three in that slingshot who knows it's kind of a crazy turn so um, I think that's what's gonna happen Lando's gonna start on pole eventually he's gonna find his way onto the podium in the P3 spot it's been kind of crazy people have kind of just now noticed that stat over the summer break we all had too much time on our hands and someone noticed how bad Lando Norris has been off the start and how he has never led a lap one after he's gotten pole position. But I can't make fun of you for putting your pole driver in third place because I've done the same thing. I've put George Russell in P3 as well. Uh, that's nothing against George Russell. I just think that the Mercedes car is still slightly behind some of the other teams in race pace. Uh, obviously, Mercedes finished across the line 1-2 in Belgium, but if you look back at that Grand Prix, we saw... Part of it, Ferrari had better race pace at the end. Oscar Piastri clearly had better pace than those Mercedes did. So I think Mercedes as a team is still lacking something during the race. And so I think P3 is will be a great result for George Russell. Another podium for Mercedes. They're on quite the podium streak right now. But I don't think we'll have enough to go any higher. Yeah, it makes sense. I think the, I think the Mercedes is a, is a good package. But it'll be interesting to see where they stack up kind of with all the teams coming out of the summer break. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where everybody stacks up because we didn't have a clue where people would be every single weekend, and now we've been off for a month. So who knows what's going to happen in the the pecking order for sure. Who do you have finishing in second place this weekend? In second place, uh, I've got Max Verstappen. Uh, I feel like this is, for me, this is a vote of confidence in Max. Uh, I don't think he's going to be on pole, um, but I think he's going to have a solid race, and I think he'll, he'll end up winning. Um or not winning, getting P2. Uh, I think I'll have a solid race, and uh, it'll be really interesting to see him fight uh, the McLarens at the front. I said it all earlier. It's really hard to pick against Max Verstappen at his home Grand Prix. We've said it before that all these drivers seem to be having terrible luck at their home Grand Prix, but it's kind of switched around this year. We saw Yuki perform well in Japan. Lewis got uh, his first win in a while at Silverstone, so... Max Verstappen could be the driver that continues that streak of doing well at their home Grand Prix. I've gone for Oscar Piastri in second place. He'll probably find some way to say it's his home Grand Prix because of all the orange in the crowd, and he's been doing that for like every Grand Prix this year. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, you talked about it earlier when you predicted Oscar to be your protein pusher. Has a lot of momentum. We talked about him a lot over the summer break, how both of us are backing him to have a strong end to the season, maybe even finish higher in the standings than Lando Norris or have a better end to the year than Lando Norris. And I see no reason why that won't start here. So I've gone for Oscar Piastri in second place. Yeah, I think that's a great pick. I think that pick is so great that I have put Oscar in P1. I think Oscar is going to win the race. Um, you you said it perfectly. Uh, there's no reason why his great second half of the season didn't start this weekend. Um, and I think he is going to do really well. I think McLaren um, are going to be forced to choose pretty quickly like into the race. Like, all right, which driver is ahead? Um, let's, let's give them the favorable strategy. My prediction is that Oscar is going to kind of be ahead in those, uh, that first stint maybe, or he'll have better pace in the first stint, but give him a favorable strategy and that'll ultimately end up in a victory for him. Well, I don't know if wanting McLaren's favorable strategy is where you want to be because they've messed that up pretty frequently this year. So maybe it'd be better for him if he was behind Lando Norris. I don't know. Uh, but we, we've done something here. We've just switched our first and second drivers because I've gone for Max Verstappen in first place. I just simply cannot pick against him at home. And I know that that is terrible evidence because that has nothing to do with car performance, nothing to do with driver talent. It's just Max at home. And I've never seen him lose that race. I don't think it's going to be this weekend. I think after the summer break, having time to recharge, I think Red Bull is going to look a lot better and look a lot different than they did going into the summer break. Uh, I think they'll be better operationally. We did see some mistakes start to creep in that we're not used to. We saw some tensions and in, in relationships creep in that we're not used to. Uh, so I think Red Bull will be a, a different team, a better team coming out of the summer break. And I expect Max Verstappen to take full advantage of that and win this Grand Prix. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, I, you know, here's a real hot take is that you know, we got the Red Bull 10 for 10, you know, threw that out there as a possibility, you know, that could happen, but maybe it'll be a Sergio Perez 10 for 10. I mean, nuts. We haven't even, we haven't even talked about Sergio Perez in this whole, we're like 20 minutes in this podcast, haven't even mentioned him, but he does have a new engineer this weekend. I don't know if you saw that uh, his current engineer is uh, le- going on paternity leave. Congratulations to him and his family. Uh, and so there have been tons of people online that have been calling for him to step aside and no longer be Sergio's engineer. So I think he'll be gone for this race and maybe one or two more races afterwards. This will be a great chance to see if it was more the engineer's fault or if it truly is Sergio Perez or something else. But this is a variable that we get to test and see if there is something else behind Sergio's struggle than Sergio Perez himself. That's true. It, it could be very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, you take away his race engineer and if he continues to struggle then you could say well it's really a Sergio problem it's not a Hubert I think is his engineer's name or something like that but it's not a Hugh problem it's a Sergio problem which I think everybody kind of suspects but you know we'll get to confirm that yeah who knows he might if he wins this Grand Prix uh, you can just go ahead and extend that paternity leave as long as you need. If Sergio Perez comes out and goes like three for three while he's gone, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. That was a pretty bold segment that we just talked about there. Let's talk about our official bold predictions. Brandon, what are your two bold predictions for the Dutch Grand Prix? My bold prediction number one, which I kind of hinted at earlier in the podcast, is that pole position is going to be decided by less than a tenth. Um, I think that it's going to be a great qualifying um, with even with the potential of like mixed conditions in there. Uh, I think, you know, I think Lando's going to get pole and it's going to be very, very close. I think Max is going to be strong in qualifying as well. I think he'll probably qualify in the top three or four. Um, and I think, you know, between at least P1 and P2, it'll be less than a tenth. So we'll see. Yeah, I don't know how bold that is. That feels like that has been happening fairly frequently this year, but. That is we, certainly we, a, a tight qualifying, so I'll accept it. What is your second bold prediction? If you won, we could tighten that up a little bit. No, we'll we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. That's great. All right. I'd be willing to do that. I was thinking about that uh, when I was typing this out. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we'll, say, we'll keep it the same for now. I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you two points if three cars are within a tenth. How does that sound? That makes it a little more bold, puts a little at stake. How about that? Sounds great. That sounds great. 
lock it in. Sweet. All right. Bold prediction number two. Uh, I think six different teams will be represented in Q3. Um, so that also, I don't know, feels like on the borderline of bold prediction, but I think I think that it could definitely happen. Um, six different teams represented in Q3 and qualifying. So uh, let's see. I think that for sure counts as bold. Definitely flirting with the border of it because for that to happen, you're looking at the possibility of one of the top eight drivers getting knocked out in Q1 or Q2. So if that happens, you know, you're guaranteed to have that prediction come true. So I think it, we're flirting with bold prediction there for sure. My bold prediction, number one, is that uh, Williams will score points this weekend. Maybe it'll be Logan Sargent. He did have uh, maybe his best weekend of the, the year there last year. He made it into Q3 for the first time and, and then unfortunately crashed out of the race with a hydraulics issue. Uh, but Williams performed well here last year, and this was kind of a track that you wouldn't necessarily expect them to perform well. Sure, it's a very high-speed track, but it's also you know a very windy, twisty-turny track, and Williams have made their car have more downforce this year and perform better in those kind of tracks. So, uh, you know, if you think they performed well here last year and then have gotten better at this kind of tracks, maybe they'll have a good weekend here, uh, specifically leaning on Alex Albin for this prediction. Uh, but my first prediction is that Williams will score points. My second bold prediction is that at least one RB driver will out-qualify Sergio Perez. Uh, unfortunately, our first planned time to talk about Sergio Perez was me dunking on him again, unfortunately. Uh, but maybe this would help you out if, if an RB gets into Q3, then uh, we, we could see your prediction come true. Uh, but yeah, I think both RB drivers uh, had a fairly good end to the summer break, obviously with uh, their strong rumors of Sergio Perez being replaced and then that not happening. I think both drivers will continue to be motivated after the summer break because it was said that it will be reshuffled for 2025. Liam Lawson is still looming large and no one really has a contract in a Red Bull seat uh, for longer than the next race that they're participating in. Uh, so I, I expect uh, both the RB drivers to be fairly motivated and one of them to out-qualify Sergio Perez. Yeah, and I think if you remember back to last uh, last year at Zambord, not only did we have that amazing classic Logan Sargent moment, um, but Daniel Ricardo um, was actually, you know, kind of just getting into his own. Uh, I think he was having a solid weekend. I didn't get through all the practice sessions, um, unfortunately, due to breaking his hand. Um, but, you know, I think he was warm enough to have a great weekend uh, at Zambord before that happened. So, Hopefully, Daniel uh, is feeling motivated, wants to have a great performance at Zanboard after uh, not having a good one there last year. Yeah, definitely did not have a good weekend there last year, but that was mainly out of his control. We've got some bold predictions from the fans. As always, we put posts out on our social media asking for your bold predictions and promise that the best ones will always be read out on the podcast. So each and every week, check our social medias and submit your bold predictions. This week... At Ethan8181 says, Oscar Piastri will win. Brandon, you agree with that, so you're feeling good about his prediction there. Uh, at the Foggies9843 says that Perez will get points. Crazy that we are at a place in his career where that is a bold prediction, but it honestly feels bold to me because if you were like, Justin, put money on if he'll score points or he won't, I would have to think long and hard about it. So that is for sure a bold prediction in my eyes. And at Huh 4206 says Max won't win his home race, which statistically is pretty bold because he is undefeated at that track, like I've said. So three great predictions from the fans this week, as usual. And the cool thing about those three predictions is that all three of them could come true in the same scenario. So it's a possibility that the fans go three for three. If the fans go three for three, um, we probably won't do as well, which is okay. But... Uh, That'd be cool. Hey, I, I could see us going four for four and the fans go three for three. We don't really have many conflicts of interest here, so it's okay. Those are great predictions. We can all be right. It's all good. Except except for your Sergio Perez one. That one could get dicey with him getting points and getting out qualified by I don't know. Get, you're right. It could all happen. Little little P eleven. He could even make Q three and have an RB driver finish eighth and him finish ninth. It's it's all is still to play for with these predictions. It's it, it'll be a crazy weekend. We're shooting for seven for seven, and pull three cars within a ten. Well, I will say, unfortunately, last time we said seven for seven, we went zero for seven. So 
Hopefully we're not jinxing it this time. It's okay. It's okay. We could always maybe edit that part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, just cut it out. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are your parting podium thoughts before we leave these lovely people? Parting podium thoughts. I'm just excited for the second half of the season. Uh, I'm excited for Formula One to be back. I know we've got another fall break coming up, but after the fall break, Formula One will be back and we'll be there, which is really exciting. So it's going to be a great time watching Formula One again this weekend. Feels, feels weird that it's coming back uh, after so long, but I'm very excited. Uh, It felt like these four weeks have just been forever, but Formula One is back. Unfortunately, there will be another four-week break, but then it is Austin, and we will be there, and that four weeks will just get us even more excited to be seeing Formula One in person. That is all we've got for our predictions for the Dutch Grand Prix. As always, thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a review, leave a comment. Do what you know to do on the platform that you are watching or listening this to. Uh, You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, even all of the places wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you guys for listening. We will see you in the next one. See ya.